Carrie, Carrie Gilliam is with us, or Gillum is with us. Uh, she's the author of Whitewash, the story of a weed killer, cancer, and the corruption of science. Carrie, welcome back to the program. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. I'm that's, not a technical gal. <laughs> that's quite all right. It's all's well that ends well. So uh, what right. killed Jack McCall? <laughs> what did kill Jack McCall, right? Uh, well, if you listen to Jack McCall's family and the, and the lawyers representing him, uh, Roundup, exposure to Roundup, Monsanto's best-selling weed killer. Uh, he's one of about 3,500 plaintiffs now that are suing Monsanto, alleging that the company's weed killer caused him to suffer from non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, right. So he and he and as I said, he's he uh, died the day after Christmas in 2015. But his wife and family members are suing Monsanto now. Wow, I know somebody who yeah. died of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and was a an avid gardener. I don't know if he used a lot of Roundup or not. Uh, how do how do you yeah. determine Roundup exposure for something for the purposes of something like that lawsuit? Right. I mean, I, I think this is a, a challenging case. I uh, have said before, I think the plaintiffs have a high hill to climb because it's always very difficult, right, to say one particular chemical causes, you know, one particular disease and, and in that particular individual. But, uh, you know, the plaintiffs have um, gone through, you know, months and months of discovery and have obtained, you know, millions of pages of internal Monsanto documents. And, and also looking at the research studies, and they believe they can win this case. You know, there, there's a lot of information out there linking this chemical to cancer and information indicating that maybe Monsanto's been working pretty hard to hide that. Now, hasn't the European Union defined glyphosate or glyphosate, the, the active ingredient in Roundup, haven't they defined that as a, as a probable carcinogen? Well, so it was the International Agency for Research on Cancer, uh, which is part of the World Health Organization. Uh, and this is essentially a, a team of, you know, top ranked independent scientists from around the world who come together and look at evidence, look at research, uh, you know, on different chemicals. And they looked at glyphosate in 2015 and determined that it was a probable human carcinogen. So that's that's the state of the art right now, the, the, this product that is being sold and to, to, to what extent is our food, you know, you've got a chapter, you know, glyphosate for breakfast or Roundup for breakfast. To what extent is our right. food supply actually right now contaminated with glyphosate? Well, that is a great question. It's really hard to answer because our federal government, the USDA and the FDA, uh, even though for decades they have had testing programs to test foods for pesticide residues because, you know, it, this is a, a, a health concern, uh, they don't want to test for glyphosate. Uh, widest selling, you know, weed killer in, in all of history, and they don't want to test for it. And, and this has been something that I've spent a lot of time researching and talking to the agencies about. I've done a lot of Freedom of Information Act requests, gotten documents uh, from internal USDA and FDA uh, you know, managers. And what you see is they don't want to test for this chemical. Now, the FDA did some limited testing in 2016 and did find glyphosate residues in honey, every honey sample that they pulled mm. from store shelves, including organic honey. They found it in baby food and oatmeal products. Uh, and a number of private citizens and, and nonprofit groups have tested and found it in cereals and you know, snacks and a whole array of foods that we feed our kids every day. I've, I've heard people, and we, we actually had a, a, a scientist on this program suggesting that glyphosate could be tied not just to cancer. Um, in your book, you mentioned ADHD, but uh, this one particular scientist was talking about how it interrupts the uh, metabolic pathways of bacteria and thus screws up your gut bacteria and might even be right. associated with this explosion in the incidence of, uh, of uh, gluten intolerance, that it might be because uh, just 15 years ago or so, they started spraying glyphosate on wheat crops three, three days before right. harvest to, uh, to make the stalks more brittle to increase the yield by 10 or 15 percent. What, what, what's up with that? Right. So Monsanto has recommended to farmers that they can spray this chemical directly onto crops like wheat and oats and barley and other things just very shortly before they're harvested and that this will act as a desiccant, as you described, it will make harvest uh, sort of more consistent uh, and easier for farmers, particularly in wet, cool environments. And farmers have been doing this. And, and so what we're finding are 
residues of the weed killer in the finished food products. We find it in flour and, as I said, in cereals and snacks and things. Um, and many scientists are evaluating that and are becoming more and more worried that this is interfering you know, with sort of gut bacteria and, and could be leading to a whole you know, host of problems, including you know, the theory that there's a gluten intolerance problem uh, and some other things. Now, that research is not as developed uh, as some of the research you know, tying it to kidney problems, uh, liver, uh, and, and the cancer problems. Mm. Yeah, this is pretty extraordinary stuff. We're talking with Carrie Gillum, an investigative journalist and Huffington Post contributor, research director of U.S. Rights to Know, Right to Know, uh, author of the new book, Whitewash, the story of weed killer, cancer, and the corruption of science. Whitewash is the title of the book. The website, CarrieGillum.com, C-A-R-E-Y-G-I-L-L-A-M.com. And you can tweet Carrie at Carrie Gillum, C-A-R-E-Y-G-I-L-L-A-M. Carrie, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. And Appreciate thanks for writing a brilliant book. Uh, the book, once again, is titled Whitewash. We'll be back.